Hi guys, welcome back to Deliberate Conscious and Candy Talks. I hope you're doing well and the Lord has kept you well and I'm grateful to be on here as usual to share what the Lord has placed in my heart and um, you know as usual there's always something that makes me come on here. There's a story behind every every video I make and for today I was just thinking about even before I get to the main message I was just thinking about um, discipline you know and i was watching one of my faves the edwards family you can go check them out on youtube they just talk about family and also they value god a lot in their in their bringing of their family and yes so i was watching them and i could see the enthusiasm they had while they were doing it and the the work they put in as they do their videos and that got me it got into my head because i was like um yes i have I have what God has placed in my heart and yes, I already know what God has called me to do which is speaking life into people and um, Helping them overcome tough times with messages that God places in my heart But then I was wondering do I do it with as much, you know Enthusiasm as I should like do I embrace this calling and go forth with it with energy as I should and I figured that sometimes I leave it to you know just nature you know every time i sit down and think whenever i feel like i have the energy to do this is when i'll do it but i realized life is about giving yourself that morale that motivation it should come from within and yes i pray to god but if i don't do it myself like if i don't take on that energy and believe that god has put some positive energy inside of me and practice it it's never going to come just from the out of the blues and i believe that they also have bad days but the consistency and the commitment they have towards doing their job is amazing and so um it got to me and i feel now more energized more motivated and i feel the need to stay more consistent even as i carry out this task that god has placed in my heart because as it grows, I believe I will have a greater responsibility and I have to step up and I believe that is going to give me the energy to do that. So even for you guys who are, you know, who desire maybe to go independent, be your own boss, let me tell you, when you don't have discipline, even your own, uh, your own business, your own uh, project will fail because everything has to have discipline whether sometimes you wake up and you feel like you don't have the energy to do something and you have to do it because you have to take on that um what is it called guys give me a word you have to take on that challenge and motivate yourself every single day because the best motivation comes from the from within and today i want to talk about calling something that i've wanted to do for a very long time now because um, I'm going through the journey of understanding my own calling as we speak and sometimes it's not easy when maybe you wanted to be a doctor and God is calling you to be a preacher, you wanted to be a pilot and God is calling you to be a musician to spread the gospel through music, you know, etc, etc and so many things we'd like to be but we realize there's something else that is burning inside of us that we keep ignoring or we keep, you know, pushing away because maybe people do not understand it well or yourself, you don't feel like it's convenient enough to make you survive or thrive in this life and things like that. And it's something I've wanted to talk about for a while now because, like I said before, it's a journey I'm going through and I don't know what you are going through yourself. And so if you're that person struggling with your calling, wondering whether you have the energy or the, motiva the motivation to pursue it in totality. Here is the place to be. I hope you're going to be encouraged. So we are going to start it with a word of prayer and then we can get right into scripture. And yes, I hope it's going to motivate you. I hope it's going to give you a new perspective, believing that this is God who has sent this message through his vessel, myself. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are humbled before thy presence this day, Lord. We are grateful for an opportunity, my Father, to fellowship together, my King of Glory, even virtually Jehovah, King of Glory. We thank you, my Father, for the word that you've prepared for us, my God, and the time it has taken, my Father. You say that you will make everything beautiful in its time, and I believe that this is the right time to talk about this. And I pray that you're going to bless your word, my Father, that to each and every ear that is going to hear this, my Father, to each and every heart that is going to receive this, my Father, that it shall bring a transformation, my King of Glory, 
for the glory and honor of your name lord we thank you my father because you're interested in our lives my father and everything works together for good my father to those who love you and are called according to your purpose my king of glory and therefore we believe my god that we are called according to your purpose my father and you're giving us this word my father not just so that we can hear it my father but also we can do it my father and benefit your kingdom my father and even ourselves Jehovah king of glory so we ask of you my father this word my father is going to transform us from the inside out my father and that more people shall know you my father and that they shall receive the peace that comes with knowing you lord we believe that everything you do my god you do it deliberately my father and so everybody who's going to listen to this my father is going to gain my king of glory and your kingdom is going to also gain lord we thank you and we honor you lord for it is in jesus name we do pray believing and trusting amen so guys um when we talk about calling i'm reminded of paul you know Paul, who was persecuting Christians, and I know we know a bit of that story, and I have scriptural uh, backup. In the book of Acts chapter 9, that's where Saul's conversion or Saul's calling is um, written, is recorded in the Holy Word of God. And I was excited to know that God called Saul, you know, because before he was Paul, and then he was given a new name, which is Paul. So that he could identify more with his calling. You know, God changes your name. God changes your everything. But he meets you right where you are. God is not ashamed of calling you from right where you are. Because he is God. He has all the authority. He has all the power. He created us. We are clay. He's the potter. So he can do absolutely anything he wishes to do with us. And we are glad that his plans are for good. And so when I read the book of Acts, I was motivated. I was encouraged. Because I realized that when God calls you, he's quite deliberate and he's quite intentional and he does not go back on his word. So when when Saul was called, he was actually, he had actually, he was from the high priest, you know, to get letters so that he could go and um, whoever, like all the Christians who are found in Damascus, he could just get them and take them to the chief priests for arrest just because they were preaching about Jesus because that was his that was his day-to-day business to arrest the people who and to persecute Christians who were talking about Jesus but guess what that same Jesus called him in his state as evil as he was God called him and there's one particular verse that got me because God sent after after Paul Saul had been called he was made blind for at least three days and God sent Ananias. He gave Ananias a vision and he told Ananias to go to Paul and touch his eyes and, you know, so that he could finally see again. And Ananias questioned God because to Ananias, there was a concern that everybody was complaining about Paul, how he was persecuting Christians, and now Ananias was wondering, eh, how, how, how God, how is it that you are calling Paul to now speak about the gospel? And I think I'm just going to read from the book of, uh, please allow me to read from the book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Just give me a minute, please. So in the book of Acts chapter 10 from verse 14, this is what um, the Lord says to Ananias. No, actually Acts chapter 9. Yes, Acts chapter 9 from verse, from verse uh, 10. Yes, from verse 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple called Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, the Lord, um, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask him for a man, Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have had many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. 
But the Lord said to Ananias, here's the point, guys. Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. When Ananias pointed out about Paul's wickedness or Saul's wickedness, God just told Ananias to go ahead with whatever he had sent him to do because he already knew about Paul. He already knew about his evil ways, but he had chosen him because he is God, guys. And so I just want to come on to us and our lives and our day-to-day -day living. Probably you keep questioning your ability to be who God is calling you to be. You know, a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, you know, whatever it is that he has called you to do, a, a civil servant, all those things, because... We are the body of Christ and we are called to do very different things. But there's a way in which you can do everything to glorify his name. And he creates the platform, right? And so I'm impressed by the fact that when Ananias pointed out the weakness that Paul Saul had, God still told Ananias, that disciple, Ananias, to go ahead and carry out the, the task that God has given him. So even for you today, probably you're wondering, Will the society accept me? We, am I able to even acknowledge the fact that I've been called to do a certain task? For instance, myself, guys, sometimes I feel like, oh my goodness, me coming here to spread the word of God or to share the word of God and the knowledge and the wisdom that God has impacted upon me in matters, relationship, relationship with God, relationship with people. Sometimes I, I, I feel intimidated by the circumstances. But when God has called you, my people, when God has called you, he provides. Where he guides, he also provides. He will provide you with the wisdom. It doesn't matter the people that you, you have to talk to or the people that you have to attend to or the people that you have to serve. The only thing here, the only X factor is the favor that the Lord has endowed upon you. Because when he calls you and he anoints you, he does not turn back on his word. So for you who's wondering right now, wondering whether really you're up to the task, I'd like to remind you, as long as you are seeking God, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 33, it says, seek first, chapter 6, verse 33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added unto you. The most important thing for you to do, if you're having doubts concerning your calling, if you're having doubts concerning your relationships, if you're having doubts concerning absolutely everything, the only thing you need to do is to seek God. Seek God honestly, seek God wholeheartedly because he's there to listen to you. The only thing that you have to do is seek God. I cannot say this enough times because that's the only assurance you will get. And once you seek him and you hear him clearly on what you're asking him about, then you go ahead and carry out that task because he will lead you, he will guide you, he will offer protection where you need pro protection, he will offer providence where you need resources, he will offer absolutely everything. And people may doubt you for a while. I mean, the disciples, the disciples doubted Saul because he had been the one persecuting them. So it beats logic, my people. It beats logic to think that Paul now is going to spread the word of God. So they had the right to doubt because, I mean, we are human. And so sometimes it's hard to understand such concepts. They had the right to doubt. But God proved himself. Sometimes we feel like we have to, you know, sweat and, and go through so much pain trying to make people understand that really God has called you. The only thing you need to do is go on your knees. And the Lord will fight your battles. Remember... There's a time that Jehoshaphat was going to go into battle and the Lord told him, you do not need to fight this. You only need to stand in your position and the Lord will fight for you. So please do that as well. Standing in your position means being very devo devoted, eh, being very devoted to what God has called you to do, giving it your all, giving it your energy, being positive minded every other day or praying when you feel like you don't have the energy because we are human, but you need to adapt to that discipline of of being committed you know because commitment is the only thing that will forge you forward when god when god calls you into doing something and you do not have commitment and you do not have the discipline then it will lie there and used like the people who are given um talents and none of them did, did not um, exercise it did not share it with the people he was yani work he did not work towards multiplying that so if you're given um gift by the lord 
if you're blessed with a certain gift and you're not exercising it it is not going to bear any fruit so you have to take on the courage be confident be bold in the lord seek him continually in prayer and he will never fail you he will always answer so you have to be focused you have to be disciplined this is something i keep telling myself guys by the way it's not that i'm perfect my god i fall short so many times i slack so many times but i thank him because every other day he draws me closer to him with every challenge that i encounter and so you have to believe in yourself you have to believe in the god who has called you and i believe when we do that we are going to advance this kingdom for the glory of his name and also advance in our own lives so guys i hope this has helped you i hope you've taken one or two uh, important messages in the message of um, embracing your calling and believing in the god who's called you towards doing that task and let's keep sharing it if it has encouraged you please don't hesitate on sharing it guys it is important to support my work also so that people can know what i'm about and also can benefit from what god is placing in my heart and remember to comment and share what it has been like for you discovering your purpose discovering your calling and the struggles let's share and encourage one another because the bible says that iron sharpens iron i love you all and let's do this next time bye